Okay, there's a little error. Yes. Hello, thank you for watching. You are on the move with Lady Kate. I have some phenomenal women uh, with me today, and we are going to be talking all about politics and the role of women um, in in politics today. So uh, welcome, if you are joining us, let's take a minute to welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome, if you are just joining us. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you for joining. Thank you. You are watching On The Move with Lady Kate. We are going to be talking about women as game changers in politics. So uh, welcome, please join us, grab your cocktail. We are celebrating Women's History Month, looking at the advances of women in the uh, landscape of politics and uh, the journey we travel as women in politics and uh, where we are and where we are heading. So this is gonna be a fantastic conversation. Grab your cocktail, take a seat, join the conversations. We will be taking questions from you. Uh, we'll highlight some of your comments um, with, um, you know, to our guests. I have phenomenal women with me today and we are going to have a fantastic time so i'm going to um bring them on and they will introduce themselves and that uh, we'll just go from there so thank you thank you for joining us thank you yeah so i will bring on um miss Fat fatima Terberry. um just one second okay Please introduce yourself. You are muted. One second. Thank you. Hello, Lady Kate. Hello, everyone. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for having me. Um, I am Fatma Taberi. I am an attorney. I practice immigration and special education law and um, and also work with nonprofit organizations. So, And I am a great fan of Lady Kate. And oh. um, I am so happy to be here. Oh, thank you so much for that great introduction. You are a great woman, and it is an honor to have you. Next, I am bringing on uh, Ms. Walla. Uh, hold on one second. Okay. Exit solo. Ms. Walla is right here. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lady Kate, for having me today. Um, I'm Walla Blagay. I'm an attorney. I'm an advocate. I'm a labor attorney. I represent nurses, but I also advocate for those in the workplace. I've been an advocate um, in Maryland and even Prince George's County for a long time, working on a variety of issues. Um, and I am actually, I'm going to talk a little bit about my campaign, but I am also running for County Council in Prince George's County. So I definitely want to share that, but thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Welcome. You are a phenomenal woman. Thank you. Yeah. And next we will bring on Mafa Shirley Jinwright. Just hold on one second. Let me get you off mute. Okay. You're still muted. One second. Unmute. Yeah, there you go. Okay, Mafo. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Lady Kate, for having me. I'm Mafo Shirley. I am Mafo Shirley, generator PZ, and I live in Fairfax, Virginia. I'm not running for office. However, I am a civil rights advocate and a huge supporter of women who are trying to change the dynamics in our government by running. So. I'm looking forward to this conversation. I participate on several government boards and commissions. 
So I'm looking forward to this conversation. Thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you, welcome. You are a phenomenal woman and it is an honor to have you on this panel today. Next, I'm gonna bring on uh, Nene. Yes. Oh, hello. Yes. Hi. Uh, hi, my name is Nene and uh, I'm an activist. I'm a politician, not only here, but uh, also uh, back home. And uh, I'm, uh, I have a company, I'm, I do international consulting. That's what is my job. That is wonderful. Thank you, Nene, for joining us. This is gonna be great. So before we start, I think um, we are here to also celebrate um, Women's History Month. This is a cocktails and conversations that we're having. So um, please hold your glass up to Women <laughs> International. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We should have brought our glasses. I have my water. <laughs> That's right. Yes. So kudos to all the women leaders yeah. out here who are making a difference. So um, let's dive into the conversation. So um, first of all, how happy are we to see that women are actually game changers? Hey, I see your water. <laughs> Thank you. So in the recent uh, United States presidential election, women kind of made a huge impact. Please mute if you are not uh, speaking so that um, we don't get too much feedback. Okay, so um, this question is, is gonna go to um, Fatma Tabari, um, and then everyone gets a chance to chip in. Um, the impact of women in the last uh, election that gave the presidency to Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. Thank you. So we know that women created our new president, basically. We, we put him in office. Um, and it started even before the election, we had all these women groups that came together. When he picked Kamala Harris to be his VP um, running mate, the coalition building that came about was the most amazing that I think I've ever seen um, as far as um, building up women. We had the Divine Nine, and the Divine Nine are the sororities, uh, um, the Black sororities here in the United States that came together and worked together and um, coalesced and supported that ticket. And because of that work and that groundwork is what propelled um, the rest of the, the, the country and the, the rest of the, the, the population, especially the black women to stand behind them. And we know the work that um, Stacey Abrams did in, in, um, in Georgia from 10 years ago. So she didn't just start it, right, in 2020. She has been working on this for the past at least 10, dec um, one decade, 10 years ago. And at the end of the day, the work showed itself. And, you know, the, the, some of the numbers came back from the 2020 election and 57% of women voted for Joe Biden. And of that 57%, majority of them were black women. So black women voted for uh, uh, President Biden, I believe about maybe 90 percent, 90 something percent. And the turnout was amazing. Like I know that we had um, women for Biden. We had African women for Biden. We had women for um, black women for Kamala um, Harris. We And I had a black diaspora um, for uh, Biden and, and Harris, right? And that too was part of all the school coalitions that ended up coming together to build up and make women's voices heard. And I think this 2020 election, if it wasn't for women, especially black women, I don't think we would have had a President Biden. I really don't. I believe wholeheartedly that black women made this happen. And at the end of the day, we have our first black um, woman vice president. And the work that was put forth by black women, it needs to show. 
right? He needs to show in leadership positions. He needs to show in different parts of local government. He needs to show because we created what um, what we have right now. Exactly. Thank you. Yes, Walla. I cannot um, uh, agree more with, with all the comments of Fatmata. Um, I mean, I am a Delta, so yes, when we when we saw Kamala come forward, she's you know she's definitely a different sorority, but it didn't matter because we're all sisters, and we I've seen Delta started getting together, trying to push people to actually vote. So this is really important time. But I think there's another part of this that we show up that you know Fatmata talk about is just the trickle down of a uh, Kamala Harris. Um, mm -hmm. Vice presidency. Um, a lot of times, I'm you know I came from Emerge Maryland, a, a organization that that um, trains women to run, and so did Fatmata. We both came from the training there, and I used to be on the board of, of Emerge Maryland. And one thing we push is that women need encouragement to run. Like it's not you know a young man would sit in the room and just say I'm going to run, and he could be 25 years old saying I'm going to be governor. But women aren't quite like that, and we need to change that because that actually is impacting the number of women in office. Um, and so sometimes women need to see other people move. And this is one of the, the movements that um, she should run, where we push women to actually start to get into politics. We sit around, we complain, or we re reach out to the men who are representing us and advocate for our issues. But we realize the best advocate for our issues is ourselves, and we need to get into office. Um, and so this is why we are pushing someone like Kamala getting to the top is an encouragement to all black women around to say, it's okay to run. It's okay to put yourself out there. And just because people might judge you because of the way you look, the way you dress, how your body looks or what you do or how you speak, it doesn't matter because you put yourself out there anyway. Um, we saw that when Kamala was arguing and when she was, um, um, when she's not even arguing, but she was debating one of the first comments from one of the commenters that they felt that she was aggressive or that she was had an attitude of some sort. That didn't stop anything. She's still vice president and he still has to, at the end of the day, she's still representing him. So that's what we got to do is that we have to actually push each other to put ourselves forward and not care what people say about us or how they, how they portray us. Because at the end of the day, we need to be in office to advocate for our own issues. Exactly. Well said. So let's move on to uh, Shirley. Yeah, one second. Yeah. Go ahead. And like everyone else, the divine nine role. But here in uh, Fairfax, we had so many organizations that were led by women that were actually going out um, in getting people to register to vote. And that's what Stacey Abram was really pushing and being so registered to vote. And because when we find women to run, and we have a lot of women running for president, and here in Fairfax now we have quite a few women that are running for governor and lieutenant governor. And we have to put, well, qualified. Well, we just had a president, a former president who wasn't qualified. But the same thing was not said about him. But we, again, have to be the supporting factor behind these women that financially support them. Personally, I think we should have a, a fund for not just one campaign or one individual, but for all the women. And whenever they need something printed and short on funds, they should be able to reach out and say, hey, look, can you guys print a thousand copies of this for me? Because it's very expensive for women to run for office. And at the same time, they're expected to carry their household, their families. So there's so much we can do to help support all of the women that are, are running. You know, we have a huge network. You know, I don't have to be in, but I have a, a network. I heard Walla was saying the um, about Bowie. And I, I, a lot of my friends are over in Bowie and community. And individuals can play a huge role in getting people the information that is needed. And we have to use our social media to help push women 
what they are, whichever state they are, whatever position that they're running from. You know, I've made donations to people that I don't know, but I know I supported what they were running for, and we have to change. And it's these women with a different eye. Like I said, to me, a woman already completed something that a man is just beginning to think about. You know, so we're that not aggressive, we are assertive, and that more pro progressive than anything. So I, I am definitely 100% behind pushing and the education piece. We're having some training classes here in uh, Virginia on getting some of our younger kids, uh, and I call them kids because I'm much older, <laughs> but younger adults, uh, get the mindset of running for office, what you need to do to run for office. We just, uh, in our Democratic caucus here, uh, established a black caucus uh, in the Northern Virginia Democratic Caucus, so Democratic Committee. So that's another big plus. And we can use that uh, to our advantage as well. That's very good. Thank you. We'll bring on um, Nene Barry. Yeah, one second, Nene. Yeah, okay. Woman has uh, have been always uh, the, uh, been the black uh, the backbone of uh, the Democratic Party. I remember when I was a uh, uh, field organizer for the during the primary, it was women were always involved. What is uh, they're not aggressive. They just uh, have to. Uh, uh speak up to be heard but the, the only the only issues with black women uh they are black women they are not enough uh empowered to uh, to do to take to take the lead and that's where they have problem they have to know that they have the power to do it they can take the lead they can take the lead they don't have to be always following you know, uh, followers, but they can take the lead. And that's what's going on right now. Uh, with uh, Harris, I think uh, it will change a little bit uh, uh, how they will, uh, how would they, how would they will navigate in the political uh, world. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we just have to go ahead and try to see how to uh, empower women. Thank you so much. Very good point. So basically, um, the, the, the last election uh, showed us that women are very powerful, women are game changers, and women did change the game. And having a vice president in office is a source of inspiration for a lot of women. So I believe we're going to see a lot of change. Um, but as women, uh, we're in this group, we're, we're talking right now in this conversation, what is it that we need to do as women to uh, support, elevate, empower, and lift up one another? We have, in this group right here, we have Walla who's running for office. So what is it as women that we need to do to make this happen, to deliver? for women. I'm going to start with um, Fatma. Let me take you off mute. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I think it's, we started it, right? I think we, we started it in um, the 2020 election cycle. I think we started it. And I think it's just a matter of continuing what we've already started. So the coalitions that have already been built, and I'm in, I'm in um, some of these groups, have been transformed from being um, a group created for Biden-Harris campaign to become something else that is, you know, focused and centered on promoting women, especially promoting black women to run for office. Because the reality is we are not there. We're not at the table. Right now, we have no black women in the Senate. After um, Vice President Kamala Harris became vice president, we lost that one seat that we had in the Senate. And yet, who gave us the Senate, right? It wasn't just black people, it was black women who gave us the Senate, but we're not reflected within the system. So I think um, what we've already started, we have to continue and we have to make it stronger and be louder 
and not be ashamed and not be afraid. Be unapologetic of the fact that we deserve and we should have what um, every what others have. One and two, own the fact that you have the power and know your power and your strength and use that power and your strength to provide for not just yourself, but for your fellow woman. And make sure that once you have those people around the table, your voices get heard, right? Because the reality is the only person, if you remember during the, the, the um, election cycle, when they had um, all the um, debates and whatnot, the only person who was talking about, about black women health was Kamala Harris. And that's just the reality. So in order for your issues to stand out and be there, you need someone there who is going to speak to your issue. And you are the one who can speak to your issue. And that means you come forward, you run for office, you get the support from your fellow women and the rest of the community. So we can have people at the table to be able to represent us and present what we need presented for our own needs and for our families. Mm -hmm. and yes, Wala. Yes, I wanted to, um, of course, piggyback on what Fatmata said. Um, when I was talking about the organization she should run, they were just saying that the way we get women to get more engaged is really just telling them that they belong in the leadership positions. We need to encourage each other, create the networks that encourages each other. And that's why I talked about Emerge Maryland. Because part of it is like, Give an idea, like if you know a woman that's a leader, just tell them to run. Um, and I, I actually have sat in rooms with um, where men do that. They do they they do that with their groups where they sit in a room and they say, "Man, we we're going to put you in this position. We're going to get you what you need." It's something about that support system that says, "Okay, I can do it," because it's hard. Um, and we need to do the same thing as women. We usually haven't been doing that, but things have been changing. In Prince George's County, we have a county executive that is a woman. Um, we have a state's attorney that's a black woman, both black women. Um, and we, I mean, even the chief judge is a black woman. So we are actually progressive in that area. But a lot of that took somebody to say, like, and it's usually a man that tells a woman, like, you should run, you should go out there. But we need to create those networks to actually let women know. Sometimes they just need to hear it a couple times. I think she should run said three times, you know, that they hear it from some people that they say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So we definitely need to support each other and create those networks where we actually start to plan out. And I like it. I met with an, a one group where they're saying we need to put each we need to put our people in every position in the area, you know. So we that's what we need to do: create our groups and start telling people you should run. And this is a way that they can do it: is that they can actually move forward and actually make a difference. We just need to actually encourage, and the the groups make a difference. Definitely, yeah. Mafo, I'll take you off mute. Yeah. Okay. Mafo, are you there? Okay. Nene? Uh, yes. Uh, voila, uh, I do agree with you. What's, uh, we need to support each other. Mm -hmm. I'm not planning to run. That's not, uh, if I have to run, I will do it. But, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm not planning to run for now, but uh, I'm ready I'm to support you. I'm ready to support any woman that want to run. We have to support each other. I navigate, uh, I was in this field. I met with people. That's what we lack. Because uh, if we support each other, we'll go uh, very far. But what I'm seeing in the, uh, what I saw before, it's going to be very challenging. But we get in there. We get in there because, uh, uh, uh without uh, without that support the woman can bring to women they will not go anywhere they will just uh we just keep uh, this uh, climate of uh, uh i don't know how to say it because i don't want to say the wrong word but what i can tell you we need to support each other i'm not planning to run i'm just supporting people not here if i have to run it's going to be out there back home but uh, uh, i'm here to help Thank you, thank you. Mafo, yeah. Mafo, are you ready? 
I think she's in she's in mute or something like that. She oh, sure. Ah. Uh, okay, now it's okay. Yes, go she, ahead. She can't okay. hear you. Something happened with I, her. Don't okay, you you're having some connectivity issues, my I, poor yes. Yeah, okay. We'll move on to the next question, which is the okay. question of um you know uh we we as an immigrant community, right? We often get um on the edge when things are happening back home in our native countries where we all come from. I'm from Cameroon. You know, there's a lot of issues there right now, uh, a lot of unrest, you know, some unrest in, in part of the country. Um, you know, uh, Guinea is having some issues too. Ethiopia, you know, there's always something going on in Africa. So as immigrants, we are very concerned about what goes on back home. And then we have our immediate environment, you know, we're here in the United States or Europe or wherever we find ourselves. And, and some of our people do not feel like they need to uh, participate in the local like politics where they are. They're more concerned about issues, uh, stuff going on back home, and very often, sometimes I'll tell you, oh, why are you involved in American politics? You should be thinking about what is going on back home. And so let, let's talk about that a little bit because it, it is really important because this is our immediate environment. We are here. Um, we need to like be involved in what is going on here because <laughs> our children are here. So let's share some thoughts on that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna um, ask uh, Fatma to take that on. Okay, so we, we know that many people come here from back home and they usually are here temporarily, quote unquote, um, and 30, 40 years later, still here, they haven't left, right? People have had their families here, their children are here and they're living and working and they have their grandchildren. And I get the notion, you know, we all want to have our ties back home. We want to make sure that the our nations are stable and safe. But I think some of the things we missed is that because you are having a family here, because you live here, it's very important that you have a say and a voice in this country. You pay your taxes in this country. You're paying for these elected officials to be in office, for them to serve you. But if you don't make your voice heard, they cannot meet your needs. So it'll be very difficult for you to want something, but if you're not engaged and they don't hear you, they don't see you, they don't know you, it's very difficult for them to do anything for you. That's one. And number two, the reality is, like it or not, in politics, it's whoever is the loudest is the one that's heard. It's whoever that the politician believes will impact their ability to stay in office, who they listen to. And if you want changes in your country, you have to build something here to go back with, number one. Number one. And number two, you have to build something here in order for you to impact what happens between the Western world and your country. Keep in mind and think back to almost every nation out there who can who, who impacts the politics here in the U.S., they're the ones that you see statements being written about when something is happening. They're the ones that you hear about policies being, being put in place to positively affect them. And that's just the reality because no matter how we want to, you know, whether we want to admit it or not, America, the United States of America, is the most powerful country in the world whether you like it or not. And as a result, whatever happens here, many times affects the rest of us out there. Mm -hmm. So 
if we can get things done here in the U.S. of A., not just for the country, because that has to happen because you live here and your children are growing up here, but also if you want to do something back home, it gives you what you learn, right? And two, you make an impact in what happens over there, when you get there, when you get there, and who you can talk to here as a politician, who can advocate your country over there. And I'm sure while I can talk about that, <laughs> the impact of you having relationships and you having a voice here in the USA and government, uh, governmental officials in the USA and how that impacts over there. So I'll leave that there because I know my girl got something for y'all. Thank you. <laughs> Go on, Walla. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I would tell you a cautionary tale that we, um, you know, about the Liberian community and how they learned a lesson. But I would tell you, we've come a long way. I remember in 2012, I joined in with a couple of African leaders um, and we were part of the Continental African groups um, back then in Democratic Party. And we started off um, doing a tour of various um, African groups and nobody was interested in anything going on in the U.S. Um, in fact, you find most of these groups, it was just like these advocacy groups, you would have these um, tribal groups and everybody was dusting off their resume to go back home for whatever election that was going on in their countries. In fact, I remember, I think it was, was it Cameroon or I can't remember what country it was when they were having election and everybody was going back home to the election so they could even vote in the election. And then they were all preparing for these jobs that they were going to get. It's almost like the people come here get to get their experience and then wait for the new administration so they could go home and, and be, you know, minister of this. Um, and so, it, you know, we, there was just no interest. And, um, and so, and it was unfortunate. We were all kind of like a fortunate Don Trotter because one of the things they said is what Bob Matza said, you pretend you come here and say, my dad said it, he died in this country. He said, I'm not staying here. I'm coming here. I'm going to make my money and go home. That's my uncle. said. he said, I'm going to come to the United States. I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to go back home. And 30, 40 years later, you're still in the United States. And even when people go home, they, they pack their jobs up, pack their bags, say goodbye to their kids, go home. They're back six months later because it's different. This has now become your home, the standard of living, everything. This is now your community. Your grandkids are here. Your kids are here. So you really need to invest in the country that you're in. Well, Liberia learned a lesson because now we had Trump came in and a lot of organizations, it wasn't just Liberia, a lot of Trump really targeted. While people focus on the Hispanic community, the truth is the numbers between the Biden, I mean, the Obama administration and Trump administration were slightly down. But in the African community, it shot up. And it shot up because they started deporting Africans in the highest number than ever than the last two administrations, even Bush. People, Africans were happy with Bush because Bush was decent when it came to Africa, but not Trump. Trump went after people viciously. When they started, um, when they removed the TPS, they wouldn't um, renew the TPS program, DED. It became DED. Liberians didn't even have anybody to call. You had people that were like, uh, you know, populist, been in this country for 30 years, and they're calling me like, what do we do? And I definitely had the relationship to connect them. But when we sat in the rooms with them and I told them, I said, this is because the organization that was supposed to be an organization for Liberians in the United States, most of the, the, the representatives from there did not know any ele higher elected officials. They did not know very many of them because most of them could tell you the names of every minister in Liberia and the president and his his personal staff in Liberia because that was what they were focused on. They, many of them, I remember in Liberian elections, a lot of people were working, they were raising money like crazy all over the D.C. area because they thought the vice president last time was going to win the election. So that was their focus. So now we're about to get deported and now people are scared and don't know who to call. And I kind of said, after this is over, I said, we have to focus on here. You got an organization that's for the Liberian community here. Why don't you all know somebody representatives on the national level in the United States? It seems like people have the Rolodex for the entire country of Liberia and who's in charge, but what about the country you live in? So, and I think a lot of people had um, um, had that and we had to go to CASA for help, other organizations and um, thank God for the organizations that are starting to form, that are focused on African issues. Um, Omaha and his group, 
it's a lot of different advocacy organizations for, for librarians because what and even for the librarians they had to we had to file a lawsuit um, and we had to find an organization that would be willing to do that. So these are things we were scrambling to do in some other communities like the Hispanic community. They have the uh, advocacy organizations already in place. Um, so we have a lot of work to do that we shouldn't when our folks get attacked. We should be quick. We should know where to go, who to talk to. We should have the numbers in our phones. We should have all this. We have the power. We're paying taxes here. That was one of the things that we reminded people in the last election. You pay your taxes here and you're focused on home. You're not paying any tax at home. Your only tax at home is, to, is, is for all your family members calling you for money. But here, you're here. You're focused here. You're, you're paying taxes here. You need to show your power here. Um, and, and, you know, we talk about in Montgomery County, they did a lot of organizing with African leaders. In Prince George's County, we're not quite there. And we have an African uh, Af African living on almost every street in certain parts of Prince George's County. And we should, you know, the leaders are not quite, we're not quite there. So we, you know, this is a wake up call. I think the Trump administration especially was a wake up call for a lot of Liberians, a lot of like I said, Say Liberia, a lot of African groups. A lot of African groups got up and said, okay, we need to focus here because we're, you know, they're attacking us and we want to work. We're working with CASA, we're working with other organizations. ACT um, um, was another organization focused on African advocacy, um, African communities together. But we need more communities like that. So when someone comes after us, we can file a lawsuit in a, in a minute. We don't have to go to all these other organizations. We could keep it within our communities because we do work hard here. We have the people that we can do. And also I even pointed that out when we had a meeting, healthcare workers, we talked about this whole COVID issue. Healthcare workers were being, um, were getting COVID, having an impact, impacted. And that was mostly, a lot of Africans are nurses, doctors, and we don't get any, nobody's recognizing us because we haven't even pulled the organization so we can recognize ourselves. So we have a lot of work to do. Yeah, thank you so much. And may I also use this opportunity to um, just thank you, Wala, for all the advocacy you did for the DACA. You know, I followed all your um, involvement and everything. You were out there and pushing when Trump was trying to destroy everything that had been built. So thank you for that. We do recognize your efforts. So um, Shirley, uh, you work with the um, Cameroonian community. Please yes. tell us your experience there. Uh, well, I've been a part of the Cameroonian community about five years now, um, starting with the Fonz Council, which is uh, several of the kings from Cameroon. Uh, what I am finding is that in politics, I'm finding that most Africans, like I said, are not involved because they do think about what's going on back in Africa. And I'm not sure in looking at some of the uh, databases that, that we have, mm -hmm. the voting databases to find out who votes and who don't vote. There are quite a few who are not registered to vote that should be registered. It goes back to the fact that we have to educate, and I say again, educate the importance of their voices being heard. Educate on the importance of voting in local elections. Now we have two panelists that are running for a local election, and those are usually the lowest turnout of all elections. But these individuals are the ones who make the policies that you have to follow every day. And I get a lot of complaints uh, when I was the uh, NAACP president of what was going on in the county. You know, but then when you ask the person, did you vote? And they come back and tell you no. Well, then that is a part of the problem right there, that you need to be able to let your voice be heard. And if you don't want to speak out, you don't want to protest, then let your voice be heard during the poll. Now, uh, one of the panelists said, talked about not having someone at the top to speak on your behalf. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to have... You don't need to be a politician to make change. I am not a politician. I have no desire to be one. Uh, but a couple of weeks ago, I have to say, 
one of the elected officials was telling me, you know, you're a very powerful woman in the county. That's because I'm not aggressive, but I'm very assertive. I get on boards. I get on committees because your voice can be heard there and you can make changes there. I am on the governor's commission for the African-American advisory board. Well, if you don't have one of those in Maryland, maybe you should have one. It took us a while to get one in Virginia, but we make recommendations to the governor. And mostly every one of the recommendations we made this year, especially pertaining to criminal justice reform, were incorporated. They were voted on, the, uh, the governor heard us, and they was put into law. Some of them had to do with the executive order. But again, those are the people behind the scene that can make things happen. So, and it's a great experience in case you want to run for office later on. You know how things operate in the back. You can get these network, build your network from there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I give you an example. Several uh, weeks ago, I met a young man who had come from Cameroon, came through Mexico, was in detention um, for eight months in Louisiana, has been here since August, was trying to get a government ID since August of last year has not been able to get one. I heard about the issue and within two weeks, he has his government ID. But again, it goes back, working behind the scene, getting on the committees because I used my title and my voice and being on a governor's committee and as a commissioner to make that happen. Um, but, but we have to, these are the same individuals, you know, when we see them, these younger people, we can talk to them now and start training them to become politicians later on because yeah. they see what they had to go through and talk to them about the fact that you can make this difference mm -hmm. so someone else will not have to go through it. So I'll stop there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, let's move on to uh, Nene. Nene, um, you made us that you know, um, you know, you, you're not involved in politics here, but you support, you're very supportive. And I know that. Um, please, if you're not speaking, just mute, mute your phone, mute if you can. Um, yeah. So basically, you, you're you more interested in politics back home if you have to run for office, right? You would do it back home. Yes. <laughs> that's yeah. That, that's, I'm thinking about it, but I do agree with you. Uh, yeah. Why I'm in? I'm a Democrat. I I, I was a field organizer. I, I I'm very involved. Like what I said, we do have some issue in PJ County, but I will meet you later, so we can talk about that. Uh, Africans are really involved. Uh, don't get me because even if I was not involved in the presidential, like uh, with the Democratic Party, uh, hello, hello. Yeah. Okay. You. De okay. Yeah. I know that there's uh, my. Uh, you know, some uh, volunteer used to call me. Then, then what you do? What do I have to do? I say just, just go ahead and call your friend, call your family, make sure that people vote. But uh, what, what I'm doing here right now in the United States, I'm involved because I know that uh, I can be heard. My voice is enough loud to go to the United States Congress. I can go to the U.S. Senate. And let them know what's going on back home because what we do uh, what we're doing here in the united states will impact what's going on in back home uh like fat Mata say the united states is still the most powerful country in the world then uh, they uh, they can change policies back home we cannot forget about home i have my kids here they were born american they will live here i'm sure that they will not go back home uh they don't even talk about that but my, uh, I know that uh, by being involved home, I'm help. I'm helping also the one that I left there because uh, I have families there, I have uh, brothers, sisters, all that. Then I have to be involved home. What's going? Look at just uh, 
just see what happens just now in Senegal. This lady, she was raped. Okay, she say I was raped, but no one can, no one want to hear because she was accusing some someone uh, in the opposition. Then she's lying. Uh, uh, they treat her like uh, she was nobody because she doesn't have money. She doesn't have families uh, that can support her. She doesn't have like a connection, big connection. That's why, that's what's going on today in Senegal. You see, everybody, uh, this is like, uh, it's like a, a Trump era that you ask people because someone, a girl that is only 20 years old, accuse you of raping someone and you call uh, uh, your followers to go and 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 burn station burn uh, uh, burn total like the French did it to you uh, uh, burn the you know burn stuff uh, burn people's houses that's the problem and United States can help that is why we have to be involved here but we have to think about the one that we left home because it's easy to say I'm African I'm in the United States I'm good I have everything that I need I you know I have uh, I'm paying taxes okay I'm paying taxes for myself for my kids but what about the ones suffering at home we left them there we yeah. have to be involved I'm sorry look at what's going on in Cameroon we have to be involved what's going on in Senegal what's go what's going on in Guinea Conakry when we have like uh, this type of head of state that is losing it. We have to be involved. Otherwise, it will never change. Who knows? Your kid want, may want to go uh, say, okay, mom, I want to go back home. Some kid, yeah. want, uh, or some kid want to go back home. Exactly. We have to think about what's, yes, some kid yeah. want, may want to go back home. Yeah, and that's why I think as we, um, as we round up this, this conversation, it's really important to um, point out that yes, as women, we need to be more engaged. We need to participate. We need our voices heard. Right now we know that there are strong women who, who on whose shoulders we can stand on, you know, strong women who inspire us. So there's much more we can do, but, again as africans and as immigrants we also have to understand that by participating in in you know uh, uh making our voices heard here in america whoever we choose to be the president to lead us or our leaders our communities um yes america is the strongest nation in the world and if we're you know get the right people in the office yes we may also get some help so um, let's just go around and just have a last thought from everyone. Um, Fatmata? Um, okay, well, this has been an amazing conversation. I love every lady here, phenomenal woman, as Lady Kate says. We're all phenomenal women. And I want to thank you, Lady Kate, for putting this together, for giving us a voice, giving, giving us a platform, and providing the opportunity for us to speak on this extremely important issue. As we head out, I want people to realize and also keep in mind that as women, as Black women, as immigrant women, as African women, um, we have a huge role to play. We've always been, um, as um, Nana said, the backbone of the Democratic Party. So keep in mind that as the backbone, you're the one that keeps the party strong as the backbone. And don't be shy to make sure that they know <laughs> that they owe their strength to you and that your voice needs to be heard as everybody else's voice needs to be heard. As we head out as African women, we should definitely care about what happens to um, our native homes. Definitely care. And I think there are many people who are taking proper steps to that end. But I also know that for any any opportunity to do something nations. We have to make sure that we have built enough strength and political power to make that difference that we want to make back home. And 
I believe personally, that's the way to do it. The way to do it is to build enough power here or wherever it is you are in the diaspora where you have the opportunity to do that before you do something. But as you're working towards doing that, realize that the people you left back home, they've had to deal with whatever is there. We haven't. I've been here since I was 11 years old. I haven't had to deal with the stressors, with the um, hand to mouth and the, the wars and the fightings and everything that could possibly be, happen over there. I've ha I have not had to deal with it. So even as I think about doing something back home, I have to keep in mind that as I plan for that, you have to include those who have lived that experience and you have to accept that they know more than you do. So when we leave here to go over there and we're taking the knowledge that we have learned here, which I think is extremely important and crucial, also keep in mind that the knowledge base that's there is what you need to piggyback off of and marry with whatever it is you learned here. And at the end of the day, we will have strength here and we will have strength over there and we can build our coalition as black people, as Africans, as black women, and as women in general. So thank you for allowing me to speak to you today, for allowing me to come into your life for this evening. And thank you, Lady Kate, for giving me the opportunity and giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Walla. Um, yes, I, I, I agree with Fatmata. I think that we, um, one of the things I wanted to, you know, kind of say, we, we don't have to tell our own, especially the African immigrant community to focus on home. They are already doing that. I think the, the real issue is the imbalance. Um, while we have so many focus at home, we have so little focus here. Um, and because of that, we are pretty much sometimes invisible when it comes to political power in a country that we have numbers. Um, as, as noted on this you know, discussion, the United States is a very powerful country, and we can actually help home more if we use a political power that we have here. We are not. We are not showing our numbers. Um, we are not showing our um, our, our political, um, the fact that we really are, we do have the power. And we realize that many Africans have been very frustrated that they're not, you know, they'll say, well, it doesn't matter because you're not going to get what you want here. Well, we're not getting what we want because we're not at the table. Um, and what if, you know, Shirley Chisholm said it, you know, if there's no seat at the table, bring a folding chair. And it's time for us to create the folding chair that we're going to sit at the table. We have to get more people like ourselves to, to be in office, to be in positions so that we can help each other. I remember just, you know, when we were doing the whole fight for DED, when we um, sat in, in at the, you know, for the vote, we had a lot of, of the um, Trump supporters get on the um, floor that were on the floor as congressional members, you know, chanting like, you know, build the wall and all that stuff, which had nothing to do with most of the African, uh, you know, impact, in most of the African, Im you know, immigrants that were impacted. We were confused. Like people were like, build what wall? And it took really like a son of a Sudanese, um, you know, refugees that got up and had a powerful speech about how the, the whole build the wall discussion was nonsense, especially when you're talking about TPS and DED for a lot of African immigrants. It makes no sense. It doesn't even impact us. Um, so it, it, it took that. We needed a representative there that looked like us, that knew our issues to be there. And we need more of that in United States overall. And that's on the national level, that is on the local level. Um, and that's why we need to do that. And we, with women alone, we need to make sure that we encourage a woman around us. We should look to left, look to the right, see a woman leader and say, you should run. So Nene, I would say this, you should run. You should run in United States. And I know you're going to run in, in, in <laughs> home, but we want you to run here too. You can, you know, I mean, it, it is one of those things where we turn to the lead women leaders and Shirley, you're out here behind the scenes helping people. Whenever you're ready to put your foot forward and be the leader in front, we should tell you that you should run. Um, and because we do have a lot of women leaders that push, but so, lot, so many of them are behind the scenes. I've seen it so many times where they're like, I don't want to be in the front. I'll be behind the scenes. I just want to help out because nobody's going to listen to me. 
all this stuff. But with so many of them, the imbalance is a concern because we have people who don't really, shouldn't really be at the table, at the table, because many of us that are qualified to lead have given them the power and the space because we are refusing to step forward. So we should turn to a woman around you and say, you should run. We should turn to our African community leaders and tell them, this is also our home and we need to make sure that we have showed the power that we have here and it would only build the power that we can bring home. Thank wow. you. That is so powerful. Nene, are you going to run? <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, I don't think so. But uh, <laughs> what I was trying to uh, say, you don't need to run to have a voice. You can still help. You can still uh, key, uh, uh, help like uh, uh, empower women. You can, uh, I can support you when, uh, when you're running. I can support Fatmata. I don't need to run to have a voice because I know I have a voice. I can, you know, take my back to go to the United States. I will see whoever I want. Policy, that's what matters. Uh, and what matters the most is to support each other. Uh, we need that in the African community, and we lack that. We have to tell the truth. There is uh, something going on, and PG is the worst. Uh, Montgomery County, I see that they're doing great. We have to change. Uh, I don't know what we have to change. Maybe their mindset, and uh, uh, because uh, if if we are not united, we'll not go anywhere. And I'm exactly. here, I'm here to help. You need me, call me, but I'm not. I don't think, I don't think I want to run. That's fine, Nene. That's fine. And just <laughs> let you, letting you know that I, while I, but my, I was I actually running. <laughs> <everywhere>. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And um, yeah, I was just saying that Wala is actually running for office. So that's, and she's right here in PG County. So we need to rally behind her and uh, get her in office. So we'll, we'll be talking about that offline, but let's hear from Shirley. Yeah. Well, again, I want to thank everybody and thank you, Lady Kate, for having me. It's been a fantastic discussion. And for those, those of you running, I wish you the very best. Uh, but no, you will never see me running uh, for anything. Uh, <laughs> I am a strong advocate, and I push heavily from the back. I mean, my thing is, when you can get a call from a senator's office and ask you your opinion, then I say then I don't need to run because I can have those one-on-one -on -one conversations. Uh, I know um, Fatima and Wallace said they were in the Emerge program. Uh, that's what we need to encourage more of our young people to participate in programs like that. And then if, if it needs to be financially, then we need to step out and help them as well. Get them involved now so they will understand what's going on. There are these uh, programs at the governor's level, intern programs. We need to start getting our kids involved in those so they can understand at the national level how the government operates. So everybody don't need to be in the top seat, but we are in the back with our folding chair. Every time something happens, we'll whisper in your ear and tell you exactly what's going on. But you can find out a lot of what's going on by being in the background and not being an, an official. And yeah. I think we still need those people in, and that, that's me and Nana saying like she's one of those as well. One of the things, uh, I'm a Democrat, but one of the things that I tell people in the Democratic Party, uh, I hear, I used to hear, it's not your time. Well, and it's not your time was mostly directed toward black people. And I tell you, whenever you think it's your time, then it's your time. Only God can tell you it's not your time. Mm -hmm. So we have to get more people to understand and let your voice be heard. Anytime you want to run is your time, whatever you want to do. And again, I'm here to support my sisters 100%. So let me know who I need Walla to contact over and buoy so we can help you out. 
Wow. Thank you again, Lady Kate. I Kate. appreciate and you. All you phenomenal women, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And, and thanks, everyone. It's been a great conversation. And as we move from here, let's let me tell you, the world is experiencing a reset right now. So this is a reawakening. We have to wake up as women, as African women, as black women, and get our seats at the table. Whether you're running for office or just supporting one another, we must remember that we have to elevate each other, empower each other, and we will help each other execute our plans. So happy, happy Women's History Month. Let's keep making those, you know, keep striding for those milestones as women. And um, let's get more women into leadership, more women into politics here in America and back home in Africa. Thank you, my ladies. You are all phenomenal. It's been a wonderful conversation. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks.